Hello students, welcome to Legacy AS Academy. In today's video, we are going to discuss about taiga type of climate, which is also called as boreal climate. This is going to be the video which we have started in the series, that is climatic regions of the world. So first of all, if we talk about the taiga climate, it can be simply described as a forest region in the cold subarctic zone of the earth. Subarctic zone basically means that part of the earth which is lying somewhere between 50 to 70 degree north as well as south of latitude. So the subarctic is that particular part of area and especially this climate has developed well in northern hemisphere that lies just south of the arctic circle. Arctic circle as you know is 66 and half degree north in northern hemisphere and 66 and half degrees south in the southern hemisphere. So around these zone we have development of taiga type of climate. If you look at overall the distribution of taiga type of climate, we can see that in northern region, it goes and merges with the tundra type of climate near the Arctic and in the south, it merges with the temperate steppy forest and which is relatively moderate type of climate. And it is due to the location of taiga type of climate is referred also as cool temperate continental climate because obviously it is developing the cool temperate zone, upper part of temperate region, continental because the climate generally develops in the middle of the continent surrounded by the land from all the sides. And thus, since the large or vast territory of Taiga climate lies in the Siberian region of Russia, it is referred as Siberian climate as well as by the other name of boreal climate. So this is some brief introduction about this particular kind of climate. Now, if you look at the geographical distribution, what we can see on this particular map of world, the green areas are one that are representing your taiga type of climate. So, as we can see, somewhere between 50 degree north to 70 degree north of latitude, passing through countries such as Canada in Northern America, to the Iceland in the central part of the Atlantic, north central part of Atlantic, and then we have large territory of this climate that has developed very well in the Siberian region of Russia as well as Central Asia. Not only that, the climate can also be seen to be extending in the Scandinavian Peninsula, where you have countries such as Sweden, we have Norway, and also in the northern region of Britain, we can see the development of this particular kind of climate. The one very important point which we have to keep in mind here, that as far as the southern hemisphere is concerned, we do not see development of taiga type of climate because in southern hemisphere, the land masses are absent at this particular latitude and also the maritime influence is very stronger in the in South America where these land masses extend to certain distance. So, due to the lack of uh, due to the lack of land masses and overall moderating influence of maritime climate, we do not see development of taiga climate in the southern hemisphere. So let us try to understand about the climatic characteristic of this particular type of climate and the first factor which we are going to discuss is the temperature factor. So as far as this particular climatic region is concerned, obviously since it lies in the upper latitude, lies in the upper cold temperate latitude, here temperature or seasons are exceptionally cold and winters are very very long in nature. And in winter times, if you look at the average temperature of this particular region, it reaches somewhere to minus 30 to even minus 40 degrees Celsius. Now this is the average temperature. It is in this zone also you will find the uh, coolest place on the earth, the coldest place on the earth with human habitation and that is Varkhon Yans in Siberia where temperature in the winter can go as down as or as low as minus 62 to minus 65 degree Celsius. And it is due to the such low temperature that this region experiences in the winter season, we can say that annual range of temperature of this particular climatic zone is very, very high, somewhere between 50 degree to 55 degree Celsius. Annual range of temperature simply is calculated uh, depending on the maximum temperature that has been recorded during the summer season, in many cases it is July, minus the minimum temperature that has been recorded during the winter month and in many cases it is taken in January. So the maximum temperature July minus minimum temperature January will give you the annual range of temperature for any particular region. And that is somewhere 1550 to 55 degrees Celsius. And that is obvious because in winter time, temperature can drop minus 40, minus 50. And in summer time, temperature can come to 5, 6, 10 degrees Celsius, increasing the ATR of this region. Summer, however, we have to understand since it is in a higher latitude, summer are also not very warm, not very hot but cool in nature and also these are very very brief in the duration. Not only that the other seasons such as spring and autumns are also very brief in duration and are referred as transitional season not actual season in the taiga climate. 
Now, obviously, since the temperature is dropping to a significant degree in the higher climate, what we can expect is that all the water bodies that will present in this particular climate zone will obviously freeze and we have also large scale development of frost near the ground surface and in the winter time and sometime in summer time as well we see the snowfall in the climatic region of the taiga and if we talk about frozen water bodies, the water freeze to such, a, such an extent, the ice become hard to such an extent that we can see in the Siberian region and in Russia, we have the rivers and lakes over which these are used for transportation purposes as well in the winter season because the hardened ice act like a road for the people, for the local people. And obviously, as we can see that there is also in this particular climatic region, you have very strong winds that blows from the polar region that blows from the Arctic, Arctic region and cover the entire taiga climatic region in the winter. We have in North America, the winds are simply known by the name of blizzard wind, which are very cold, dry and powdery wind, powder because they are carrying large number of snow particles along with themselves. And this is something as you can see from this particular picture, when the blizzard wind blows, we can see the entire atmosphere looks very white, gray in nature because of the presence of snow and also we have very thick deposition of snow all around the uh, all around the roads everywhere similarly we have similar kind of wind you will see in the siberian region as well as in the eurasian region that is called as burran so both similarly are the same wind blizzard and burran cold dry powdery wind coming from the arctic polar region and then surpassing over the tundra uh, surpassing over the taiga regions of north america as well as eurasia so this is all about some basic facts about the temperature factor. The second factor we have to understand about is the precipitation or rainfall. So obviously, since this climatic region is developing in the area which is surrounded by land from all the side, the maritime influence is lacking in this particular climatic zone. And that is why due to lack of maritime influence, what we can expect, the amount of rainfall is very, very low. And if you look at the average annual rainfall, it stands somewhere between 38 to 63 centimeters. However, one point we have to understand here that rainfall are evenly distributed throughout the year. Sometimes it is in the form of liquid, sometimes it is in the form of snow. However, in the summer time, the peak of rainfall is achieved because it is the summer time, the continental interior, the continental land masses of this particular climatic region start to heat up. And due to this, we have convection current that has start to rise that convection current that is rising in the upper atmosphere causes the moisture to condense cloud to form and thus rainfall happens. So keep in mind in the tiger climate we have even distribution of rainfall however the peak is achieved during the summer season summer months. In the winter obviously rainfall cannot happen in the liquid form because temperature near the ground surface as well as in the at atmosphere is very very low many times below zero degrees celsius and thus we have the uh, solid form of precipitation in the form of snowfall is commonly observed here. Now coming to the natural vegetation in this particular climatic zone, we can understand that this area is populated by evergreen forest and most of trees are coniferous in nature. Now evergreen coniferous trees are best suitable tree to survive in such harsh winter cold condition of taiga because they have adapted themselves to survive in such kind of climatic region. If you talk about the ground surface, then ground surface lacks grasses, bushes, but it has been covered or the ground surface is covered with mosses, lichens and mushrooms over the floor of the taiga climatic region. So the question comes that why conifers are best suitable for such climatic region. So first of all, if you look at the shape of coniferous trees itself, it is conical in shape and this conical shape of the coniferous trees help these trees uh, to basically survive in the condition where you have continuous snowfall because if the normal deciduous shape of trees are there the branches are extending outward direction from this trunk and due to snowfall what happens there can be large scale accumulation of snow which will keep on accumulating on the branches and leaves and due to this if the weight of snow become very high what can happen the deciduous trees branches can snap and break however due to the conical shape of these trees the snow is not able to accumulate here for a longer period of time and they simply slide down on the ground thus preserving the integrity of the tree preserving the tree structure second characteristic that we can see in the coniferous vegetation is that if you look at their leaves these are very small thick uh, leaf with leathery appearance and many times are very needle shaped kind of leaves are there and these are very very important because since the taiga climate is a dry climate it is a dry region these kind of leaves help coniferous trees to preserve the water to be used during the dry condition and that is why they can extend their life they can actually survive even in the harsh dry winter 
The third characteristic is that if you look at the leaves of these trees, they have very little sap. And since they have very little sap, sap is liquid substance, gum is a liquid substance that flows inside the trees. So since these trees have very little sap, it helps in preventing the freezing during the cold dry season. So these are three major characteristics which has helped coniferous trees in surviving in this such harsh winter climate. The major trees that we can find in the type of climate, the coniferous trees obviously are spruce, fir trees there, pine tree, tamarack trees, birch, aspen, large so these are some of the major trees that you can see in the taiga forest now we can see in this particular picture this is how taiga forest looks like especially if you go during the winter season as you can see the entire area is covered by snow and we can see the conical shape of the trees and the needle shape of the leaves of these trees have help them in not letting the snow accumulate to a greater depth to a greater height and thus help in preserving the physical uh, structure of the particular trees and vegetation the taiga a characteristic uh, animals characteristic is also different from the other climatic region and we have many animals especially if you look at the american mink we have adder lynx martin caribou deer red fox amur leopard amur is a region in the eurasia in the uh, russia region these days so here we have amur leopard is found and apart from that lot of reptiles and birds are also found here but most important point we have to keep in mind here that animals also play a very important role in economy or economic life of the people here. Because of the most important economic activity of the people inhabiting the entire climate is trapping. Trapping refers to killing of the animals or basically what we can say capturing of the animals many times and then take away the fur or remove their fur and then these furs are sold at very high prices to be converted or made into winter clothes so that people who are not suit uh, people who are living in this harsh climatic region can have good protective mechanism good protective clothes so fur trapping both in canada as well as eurasian region is very important economic activity and you can find many fur farms in this particular reason people generally in the winter times people who are generally involved in farming like activities also move in the forest areas and they get in themselves involved with the capturing of these animals killing of these animals to take away their fur or to trap their fur the major animals who are well known or whose furs are well in demand in the market are animals such as muskrat is there we have ermine mink and as you can see the silver fox so these four are the most common animals which fur are in demand in taiga region the second major economic activity obviously is the lumbering. Lumbering refers to the cutting of the trees in forest and selling the woods for various purposes. And lumbering is a very important economic activity of tiger region because of few important regions. The first we can see is that coniferous forest as you can see here are pure stand forest. Pure stand forest here refers to situation where over a large area, over thousands and thousands of hectares of area, you have single species of trees that, that are dominating that area that greatly enhances the commercial utilization of this particular forest. The second reason is, as you can see during the winter time, the, uh, the slumbering activity is done. And during the winter time, what happens? The floor of the forest are covered by the snow. And since the snow provides a slippery surface, it is very easier for the people who are engaged in lumbering activity to basically move these wood logs after cutting from the trees or transport it. Third major, uh, uh, third major advantage these forests offer, especially in the case of Scandinavia and Canada, is the rivers are flowing in these regions from the north to south. That means from the forest area to the city areas. And thus, the trees are cut down in the forest areas. They are basically uh, dragged on this slippery snow surface and then they are simply put in the river course. Now, obviously, in the winter season, since it is being done, rivers are frozen, river waters are frozen, as we had discussed before. So, simply what people do, they take all these woods, wood logs, and put them on the river. And in the summer, when the rivers start to thaw, when the ice start to thaw, river water start to flow, and thus all the wood logs that have been put in the river is transported toward the city region. However, this uh, advantage is not available in the Eurasian region, Russian region, because in these regions the rivers are flowing in the northward direction. They basically drain in the Arctic Ocean, and this is far away from the civilization and cities. So these are something these advantages are not available there. So due to the pure stand of the trees, due to large area covered under the coniferous vegetation, due to the snow surfaces, due to the freezing of the river, these offer advantages in the terms of limbering. And not only that, what we can say, labor supply is also abundant here because in winter time anyway, 
people cannot involve themselves in any kind of agricultural activity so we have free labor and who engage themselves in the lumbering act obviously the other reason is because the forest of the coniferous forest trees are basically softwood trees and due to the softwood uh, trees that are found here these trees are very high in, high in demand these woods are very high in demand both for the industrial purposes such as paper and pulp industry and also for the match making industry where match uh, matches the if you look at the stick of the matches that is made from the softwood trees not only that it is also used for the fuel wood so the demand of the timber from these forests are also quite higher so due to this reason we can again summarize that trapping of the animals for taking their fur and lumbering activities is the major economic activity of the people in this particular region as far as the major inhabitant of this region are concerned we have two tribes whose name you can remember one tribe we have is the samoyed tribes that live in this particular regions and apart from that also we have siberian tribe that are living here we also have laps tribe in finland that lives in this particular region so samoyed siberian laps these are the major tribes of taiga region so that is all about this particular region i hope you understood about the basic concepts of the taiga type of climate if you like the video please hit the like button share it to your aspirants as well as subscribe to our channel for more social content thank you very much